welcome to QLab. This is the kitchen. I think filming in here might be a bit better, less orangey. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to be doing something really quite exciting with gummy bears, or you know, little jelly shaped sweets. And we're going to be exploring something called osmosis, or how water moves between membranes. I want to thank one of my mentors from a, a while ago for showing me this experiment first and I hope you're going to enjoy it and you'll need some little sweets for it. So let's get started. So for this experiment we're going to need four glasses like so and a little jug with some measurements that we can use along the sides. This is just in millimeter, uh, millilitres and we're going to need some gummy bears or some bear shaped sugary treats and of course one extra because they do taste rather good. Now what I've got in these glasses this one's empty this is going to be where we don't add any sugar this one has got 50 grams of sugar in and this one has a hundred grams of sugar in. And this one's going to stay empty in another way. So what we're going to do is I've boiled a bit of water but I've let it stand for about three or four minutes because I don't want you to be handling really boiling water and you must be careful if you're handling this and we're just going to add in 50 millilitres of water to these three glasses. So let's use our measuring jug and we'll pour in water till we get to the 50 mils. It's not too much. I'm going to add it to this one first. We may need to add a little bit more. Depends how well all that sugar dissolves. We can always add another 50 millilitres if we need to. I know it looks like there's more in this one, it just needs to sink down through the sugar. There we go. You know. Oh, and you're also going to need a spoon. I'm just going to top up the 50 grams sugar one so that it's at the level of the 100 grams and I'm going to top up just the plain old water there's nothing in it up to the same level too because my measuring flask uh, measuring beaker is not very good it's very hard to tell What I want to do now is just wait for these to cool for about 10 minutes. Just let them cool for about 10 minutes. So you might be wondering what this empty glass is. Well, that's for our control. In the glass it goes and we're not going to worry about doing anything to that one. Well, we're going to put some cling film on the top in a minute, but let's not worry about that. Then. It's just one jelly baby in each of the solutions that we've made and into the water. Now is the waiting game because we're going to wait and see what happens to them tomorrow. But before we finish up, we're going to do a little bit of cling filming. 
I'm not very good at this. So let's start with this chap over here. To help us remember which glass is which, I'm just going to use a bit of paper and I'm going to put oh, I'm going to find a good pen. Water and then uh, 50 grams sugar, 100 ml water, 100 grams sugar, 100 ml water and then control. That's just to help me remember and I'm going to put this like this. Oh, he says, should have spaced it a bit better. And put that in a safe place so that we can have a look at it tomorrow. Right, well, I have to admit it's been two days, so I was actually very busy yesterday. So it's a little bit longer, but you could have stopped it after a day because I noticed the results had happened quite spectacularly. So let's take the cling film off each of these glasses. So let's take this chappy out. That can fill for now. We'll use our spoon. So there's our control. We did nothing to that one. And let's start off with the 100 grams of sugar one. I'm going to try and lift it out with the spoon. Ooh. Let's try and leave some of that liquid. Oh, it's a little bit bigger, isn't it? It's grown a little bit. And then we've got this one, which is the 50 grams. Let's try and leave the liquid behind. Oh my, that one's a lot bigger. Ooh, they're quite delicate. There we go. And then finally, the water one. <laughs> Look at that. we've got it. That's our original and in that solution with lots of sugar it's grown a little bit with a bit of sugar it's grown quite a lot with no sugar at all it's grown enormous Ooh, and quite slidey. So why is this happening? So the first thing we're going to want to consider is how water behaves normally and I've just drawn a very simple little rectangle here to symbolize a compartment filled with water. Now if we put a barrier down the middle of this well it's simple we now have two compartments filled with water and we can consider that water as lots of little water molecules I've just represented them as little dots here moving around and colliding but nicely dispersed in each of the compartments. But what happens when I put some gaps in the wall between the two compartments? Well, now we have one compartment with a membrane. And a membrane is just something that molecules can move through. So what happens when we reduce the concentration or number of water molecules on one side of the membrane and on the other? So we have a high number on this side, on the left hand side, and a low number on the right hand side. Well, rules of diffusion 
tell us that the molecules in the high concentration area will move to the low concentration area, like so. And we can see that as they come through the membrane there. Now, I haven't balanced this exactly in this little animation, but you would end up with an equivalent amount of water on both sides of this membrane. Now, what happens if we introduce sugar molecules? Now, I've done these as little white circles. Well, we have our water concentration, which is high on the left and low on the right. So water molecules will move through the membrane. But we also have sugar concentrated. We have it high on the right and low on the left. So going back to that rule of diffusion, sugar molecules will move from the right to the left, like so. And you get a nice balanced amount of water and amount of sugar between this membrane. But here's where things start to get quite interesting. What happens if the membrane only has holes that are large enough for water to pass through? And we call that a semi-permeable membrane. It's not fully permeable because not everything can get through it. It's semi-permeable. Well, in this case, the sugar molecules can't get through it. But if we remember, the water is high on the left and low on the right. So water molecules move through the membrane. Now, what's very interesting and important to understand here is that sugar molecules take up volume. So when you add sugar or anything to your water solution, the concentration of that will be less in terms of water than pure water, because in pure water, you only have water molecules. So you can obviously have more of them in a given volume than you can have if you have other things in there as well. So osmosis is the movement of solvent through a membrane and if you always remember, it goes from high to low. It's no different to diffusion, but you have to be thinking about the right thing. Because when we're talking about the osmosis, we're thinking about the solvent, in this case, water. So it's not just that the sugar moves, because it can't move through that membrane. If it could, it would. But the water can move, and so we get single directional movement of water from its high concentration to the low concentration of water. So why do the jelly babies expand? Well, they have flexible membranes. So we put the jelly baby in some water. The jelly baby was a lot of sugar and not much water. So it had a low water concentration. But the water we put it in, well, it was obviously high water concentration. And we know with osmosis that it goes from high to low. So water moved from the bulk liquid into the jelly baby. And of course, that made it swell. And it kept swelling until the concentration of water inside the jelly baby was equal to the concentration outside the jelly baby. Now, this is very important for cells. And as an extra bit of thought, I wonder if you can think why it's really bad for cells to be exposed to pure water. Now, something I hadn't mentioned is the colour, because, of course, this one looks like it's transparent, like it's clear. And that's just because they were all the same colour when we started. But some of the colours leached into the water that we were using. And also, as we 
get larger as these expand. That colour is diluted into this larger thing. That's why it gets paler and paler and paler as we go around. This one is actually slightly orange, but it's hard to show up on the camera. So what's been happening here? Well, this one had no water around it at all, so the concentration of water inside was higher than outside. This one, the concentration of water outside, well, there was more water outside than there was inside. So water moved in, and that's why that's expanded a little bit. So that we know the sugar concentration in these gummy bears must be higher than 100 grams per 100 ml of water. This one, well, it was the same, wasn't it? But it was even more so that there was a lot more water or concentration of water outside the gummy bear than inside. And so the water moved in and it expanded. And then of course here we had just water. Well, there was a lot more water in concentration around the gummy bear. And so it swelled up a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. It was quite good fun, wasn't it? It's so strange with how big they got. Well, if you enjoyed, why not subscribe and see other videos we're doing on the channel? And mind blank. I hope we'll see you in the next video. Bye.